I'm sure no one would object to ending early. All right, three after, let's get started. Uh, let me move the window over for a little so I can see it better. Okay, let's see, where are we? Um, ba -dum -bum -bum. Oh, get out of the way. Okay, community time. Anything anybody wanna bring up from the community that's not on the agenda? Okay. SDK, I think we did have a call last week, but I don't think there was anything worth mentioning from there. Um, Clemens or anybody else that was on the SDK call, can you guys think of anything worth mentioning? Uh, no, because we were all, we, we all decided that we didn't have done, we didn't do our homework or read like Scott's notes. There you go. That was the most of the... Yep, that's my recollection as well. Okay, so moving on. So, um, when was it? Tuesday, I think it was. We actually did our proposal to go to incubator status for the TOC. Um, Mark was on the call there, uh, helping field questions in the chat. Um, uh, I, I'll let Mark speak for himself, but I think it went really well. There, we really didn't have uh, that many questions, and definitely, uh, I don't think we had any hard questions, or it seemed like anybody was questioning our existence or why we're even going for this. Um, I think the next step in the process is for us to formally make the request through a, 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 uh, a proposal file in the TOC's GitHub uh, repo, which Mark and I are working on offline, which hopefully will be done either today or tomorrow. And I believe the next step from the TOC's perspective is to actually start the formal vote, which I'm not exactly sure when that starts, but hopefully it'll be very soon. I know that Chris Anacek is very eager for us to not only get to 1.0, but to also have this next status for us to go to incubator so we can do a, a double announcement uh, both at the same time and get even more press and, and, and excitement around our stuff. So I, um, that's kind of what happened there. Uh, Mark, can you think of anything that I'm forgetting? No, I, 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 th I felt that it went very well. Uh, thank you for putting together all, the, all those slides and doing the presentation. You did a great job. Uh, the, I'd say the, the one area that, uh, or the one question that came up that we didn't have an answer to was a protobuf spec that we had explicitly uh, excluded for now. Um, but aside from that, I don't th know that there was any, any questions that didn't make sense and that we couldn't answer. Yep. All right. Any questions from the community on the, on the uh, meeting or proposal that we put forward? All right, cool. Moving on then. KubeCon, nothing worth mentioning there. I don't think anybody's made any changes to the outline for our sessions. Uh, obviously we still have time, so that's not an issue. However, I did wanna mention that the Serverless Practitioners Summit CFP um, is now live. I don't know why a note wasn't sent out. I, am, I expect one will be sent out soon. But if you actually go to the website for the, uh, I think it's called Day Zero Co-Located Events or something like that, you will see that listed there. And here is a link to the CFP if you guys do want to submit one. Uh, it closes October 4th, so we don't have a whole lot of time if you guys want to do something. If someone thinks that there should be something there from our, our group, um, you know, please speak up. Uh, we can obviously put something together if we want, but we obviously have our sessions at KubeCon itself, so I don't, I feel a little bit awkward about repeating things, but you know, it's been done before, so think about it. If you guys want to do something, we can always do that. All right. So with that, before we jump into the PRs, are there any other sort of community related topics you want to bring up? All right, moving forward then. So there was an outstanding issue about, um, open by Evan, about how to handle uh, extensions in binary format, in particular when the extension has its own serialization, meaning for example, in the HTTP case, it won't be prefixed with a CE dash. Um, and I believe on last week's call, I don't remember where we left it. Actually, I don't remember where we left it on last week's call, but I believe either through that call or offline, uh, a group has kind of agreed on a, around a proposal that basically, let me see if I have this here, basically does a couple of things. One, it says that all extensions, in fact, all attributes with, some, with a couple minor exceptions, I'll talk about those in a sec, but basically all attributes, including extensions, must be serialized with a CE dash. And that way, receivers know that there's always one particular way or one particular location 
in which extensions will be serialized. And that's including the binary format, and that includes things like the trace extension, which has its own serialization. However, to allow for extensions like trace, we do allow for a secondary extension. So they may have a secondary extension, but they still must also have the CE prefix ones, if that's what the transport calls for. Okay, so that way we still have the consistency of a single serialization for extensions and a single location, but the, the data can be replicated someplace else. However, if upon receiving those, that data in two different locations, if that data differs, then the extension must explain what to do in that particular case. Um, and barring them not saying anything, the assumption is the receiver will just pick up the, the CE dash version of the stuff. Obviously, if it's an unknown extension, they won't even know about the other stuff to even worry about a conflict. Um, but in the tracing case, I did add some logic there that says both should be passed on to the application, but make it clear that they are two different uh, properties. Uh, one is more of a transport level one and one is more of a cloud event level one. And it represents what was originally provided when the cloud event was first created. Okay. So the actual changes that I made basically uh, represent what I just described. Most of the changes in the documents are talk about how things can't have a secondary um, a mapping, serialization, whatever you want to call it. Um, but then they also say they must also include the previously defined primary mapping. That's most of what all these changes are, just repeated in each type of serialization or spec. Um, let me just make sure I'm not missing anything here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, yeah, so here's what I talk about. Where I, um, here's where I deal with conflicts in the tracing extension. Um, oops, I'll fix that typo later. Yeah, so here basically talks about how the, C, the CE version one is the one that's supposed to be used as the cloud event attribute when you create this you know, cloud event object as a receiver, but the secondary one may be picked up and offered up to the receiving application as additional metadata, okay? Um, HTTP transport does the same thing. Let's jump down to the spec. That might be the only other change worth mentioning. Let's see, what is this? I'll add some PT spec. Um, okay, so the spec here, what did, I, what did I change here? Okay, this one makes it clear, because I think it might have been Alan who was asking about this, that all extensions must use the same, must use our type system attributes. They cannot just define some random type. I think that's what we were implying before, but we weren't as clear as we should have been, just, and this just makes that clear. This here just talks about how they can't have that secondary, um, or extensions could have a secondary serialization. Nothing new there beyond what I already talked about there. Um, and I think that's basically it. Oh, down here. Um, uh, Kathy added this text a long time ago when we were talking about extensions. And I was going through there, I noticed that we have the word should here. And it talks about how the event provider should also add the data someplace else. The reason I changed this from a should to a would and remove the normativeness to it is basically because this is an example. And having normative text in an example is not appropriate um, because they're not actually mandating people actually do stuff. This is just an example. So that's the only reason that change was made, if anybody was wondering about that. All right, so let me pause there and ask if there are any questions or concerns, comments, whatever. Really? Nothing? <laughs> No, we already we already spoke about this for two weeks. I know. I'm just checking. <laughs> <laughs> I, but that tells me that you know people should have at least some thoughts on it. I I, I, I like made comment. You. I I made comments to you and you uh, addressed it. And, okay. Yeah. I should mention that. So, um, offline earlier today, Mark did mention that the wording was a little funky when I started talking about secondary serializations and some of the uh, format specs, because the word secondary just sort of popped out of nowhere. So I made a change to, uh, to those documents so that every time, or the, sorry, the first time I reference a secondary serialization, I changed that secondary serialization wording to be a pointer to the extension section, I'm sorry, extension section in the main spec so that people understand what we mean by secondary serialization. No normative changes in the, in the commits that just went in. It was strictly syntactical just to give people a pointer to, to reference this, this notion of secondary. But thank you, Mark, for those uh, comments. That was good. All right. Anybody want to raise their hand? Otherwise, I'll ask the question. 
<laughs> this is too lazy. Okay, any objection to approving? All right, cool. That was actually the very last issue for issue NPR for version 1.0. Now, before we jump to Evan's PR, which is, or his other PR, which is not required for 1.0, what I'd like to do is jump down to, actually I don't have a formal item for it. Oh, well, I guess I kind of do. What I'd like to do is see if people think we are ready to go to 1.0 release candidate one. Is there anybody have any concerns? Because that has always been our plan once we resolve all 1.0 PRs, but if you have any concerns about that or lingering doubts, please speak now. Okay, let me ask the formal question. Is there any objection to two different uh, things? I, I get, let me, okay, let me do it one at a time. Is there any objection then to cutting a new release and calling it V1-RC1? Okay, so I'll do, I'll make those changes tonight. Yay! Yeah, yes, exactly, yay. Second question. Um, do, uh, I would, according to our schedule, we were supposed to, or we are supposed to start a two week review period for 1.0. That does not mean we can't make changes, um, even large changes if we want to. And you know, at the, at, at, as we make those changes, we may want to reset the, the timeline if we, if we so choose. But what this is meant to do is to basically put nagging pressure on everybody to review the spec because hopefully at the end of the two week review period, if there aren't any changes left for 1.0, we will ship 1.0 in two, in two weeks or uh, start the vote for 1.0 in two weeks, I should say and then one more week for that offline vote. Okay, any objection to starting the two week review period? It, should we have it be a little longer than two weeks? Um, I don't know, to be honest. Uh, my initial reaction is to start with two weeks and if we need more, we can always extend it. Okay. My, yeah, the only reason I, I, I put it that way is I'm concerned if we make it longer, people will wait until the last two or three days anyway then let's make it a week. <laughs> we could do that if we wanted to. Is that a formal proposal? Yes, one week. <laughs> <laughs> what do other people think about decreasing it to one week? Everybody okay with that? I believe it two weeks. Yes. So, Wait, yeah, what is it? probably better. Okay, I, 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 just, I heard some definite two weeks or better comments, but I also heard just a yes pop in there. Was the yes to the two weeks or the one week? Yes to the two weeks, if okay. it was my yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Okay. thank you, Klaus. Okay, so Scott, you, you okay with the pushing to two weeks? Yeah, I was just trying to follow your line of reasoning. I know, I know, don't, don't, don't get in my head. It's, not, it's a scary place. <laughs> okay. So start deep doc review, two weeks. Any objection to that? All right, so starting two weeks. And that means we start the vote on October 3rd if all goes well, okay? Now, let's go back to- So, so can I, can I oh. assume that uh, there is no action that we need to have for SDKs to support a V1.0-RC1? and that we should just hold on that until, until there's a formal 1.0? That's an excellent question. What do SDK people think? I say we hold for 1.0 because having this interim thing is likely not a good thing. I would tend to agree, but Clement My plan Scott. was to try V1 and then have it be kind of maybe a branch that's kind of breaky until it's fully approved. I already, I already checked in the 1.0 support. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Okay. Well, it sounds like Mark, everybody's in agreement with you, basically. But you, you mean the proposed tentative 1.0 support? There you go. Y yes. Yes. I already <laughs> checked in the proposed tentative 1.0 support. That's correct. Oh, you guys are funny. Okay. Um, I think you got your answer, Mark. Okay. So before we go back to looking at the nice to have issues and PRs, um, Anything else about our roadmap or plans? Since those are kind of important topics. Okay. 
Um, but um, bum, bum. so Scott, I want to pick on you for a sec, since I not only because this came from Evan and he's your compadre, but also because I think you've actually looked at this one. Would you like to talk about what might have changed recently in this one that people should be aware of? I think there's just been a bunch of clarification and trying to keep up with some of the other changes that have come into the spec. Okay. Yeah, to be I honest, I, Evan notes that it, it will be have to, it's probably going to be some updates for the, I think it's like 585 or something. Oh, you mean, oh, you mean 508, the one we just approved earlier today. Yeah, that's right. It'll have to be updated to reflect those changes too. Um, okay. I guess that implies then we cannot approve it today because he thinks there are changes to be made, right? That's right. Okay. Um, in that case, let me do this. Does anybody have any questions on this PR barring the changes that need to be made for 508? I, I made a comment to Evan that I, I would like to see what the user provided data was for each of the examples. When you say user provided data, do you mean extension or something different? No, I mean like what did the user intend to send and what did it, and I, I, this is what it looks like on the wire. Ah. Interesting. That might be useful. Yeah. But it sounds like it, Okay, so either way, though, I don't think it's appropriate to vote on this one. And there are no questions for, that people have. So there's nothing to discuss. Uh, I think we just need to wait for Evan to come back with another revision based on 508 and possibly your comment there, Scott. So I think we can move forward. Any disagree with that or move on to the next topic. Okay. Um, okay, so Alan opened up a, actually, I guess, I think this is an issue of PR. He opened up a PR just a second ago that I didn't want to necessarily talk about. Yeah, that was, that was just an issue. I, I think he opened up this PR as a result of that issue, which is modifying 508. We can't vote on this one right now because he just opened it like an hour or so ago. Um, I believe, however, he wasn't necessarily planning on this being normative changes. I think this, these were just clarifications. That's why I marked it as nice to have for 1.0, but not a requirement for 1.0. But please, when you get a chance, take a look at this um, and put any comments you have in the PR itself. So I just wanted to bring it to your guys' attention. Uh, but since it is related to the extension stuff, uh, we should, should probably give it a very careful review since that is kind of a tricky area. All right, any comments on that? Okay, um, I think the SDK PR is still out there. As Clement said, we had we all had some homework that we didn't do, but I think that's actually it uh, relative to open issues. Let me just check one thing here before I even suggest we end the meeting early. Um, that one. I'm just seeing if there's any open issue you want to talk about. Okay, so there are a couple of open issues. Um, does anybody, okay, I think there's this one. That one's already done. This one, this one. Okay, I think those are taken. So of these three that I just checked, it would be really nice if somebody looked at those and decided something for version one, whether it's to add some more clarifying text, add an example, or even suggest that we close those for version one. Um, I don't want to say spend time on those on the call here. I don't think that's a great use of our time. It's just a nagging reminder that we have these as things someone at one point in time thought it would be really nice to have it for one point though, but I don't think anybody's taken the action item to actually make it a reality. And then that means and open a PR or suggest that we close it. So please, when you, when you get a chance, somebody take a look at one of those, um, or oh, I guess all three of those, you know, uh, for example, Clemens, maybe the webhook one might be of interest to you since that was your spec. Yes. Yep, um, I don't know who wrote the, uh, uh, the petition key one. I opened the issue, but I was only because someone mentioned it during a call and I didn't want to lose track of it. So maybe if you're interested in the petition key extension, um, you can look at maybe doing an example there. So but anyway, take a look at those three. If you want to, to jump on and own one of those, that'd be really nice. That way we can close these things out, these, these try for V1 issues. All right. And with that, we actually might be done with the agenda. Okay, now, while I ask, thank you. So 
any other topics you want to bring up before I do the final roll call and let you guys all have a full 35 minutes back of your day. That is quite amazing. Amazing, yes. Anybody have any other topics? All right, in that case, let me do final roll call. Kyle, are you there? Yes, I'm here. All right, Klaus, I heard you. Jeff, are you there? Yep, I'm here. All right, Jim, are you there? Yes, I am. Excellent. And Evan, are you there? I wrote in the chat. Oh, okay, cool. Um, Ginger, are you there? I am. Excellent. Fabio, I assume you're Fabio, are you there? Yep, I'm okay. here. Excellent. Did I miss anybody who joined the call late? Don't, 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 don't. Oh, yes, Scott, thank you. How could I possibly forget Scott? <laughs> All right, anybody else that I miss? Okay, in that case, um, one final note before I got to mention. Um, I'm going to have a vacation for the next two weeks. I'll send an official note to the list asking for an official leave of absence. Um, however, uh, Mark will be running the call on October 3rd, I believe is the date, so in two weeks' time. Uh, next week, um, and depending on who is actually able to make it, the order of potential run, people running it will either be Clemens, Hines, or Ginger, depending on whether their meeting or whatever it is right before this call runs late. So we do have somebody lined up to, okay. uh, to cover it. Okay? Yep. <laughs> so you guys get a, a break from me for two weeks. Congrats on finally taking time off. Only Clemens was taking time off. <laughs> That's right. Yes, I, yeah, Clemens took a lot of time off, too. I get to make fun of him for that. Clemens has a healthy work-life balance. He does. It's something we should cherish. Yes, yeah, exactly. That. You should all aspire to that. <laughs> is that. Is that what the outcome of this meeting is? Aspire to be Clemens? No, 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 no. You should aspire to Clemens' work-life balance. You should not aspire to be me. Ah, okay. Well, on that note... Because hey, you know, hey, Doug, uh, Doug one, oh. one last thing. With respect to... Uh, in two weeks, that's uh, October 3rd, I believe. Yes. Uh, and I believe that's a German holiday. So as we go to a vote for 1.0, uh, which I, I believe that we would want to do that uh, offline so yes. that people have a week after that to be able to approve or disapprove. Correct. That, that vote will be an offline vote. Okay. Yes. So did just that mean just wanted to clarify so that uh, you know we can take into account people that won't won't be on the call at that time? Correct. So that means for the German folks or who, anybody else who may have a, a reason not to make the call that week, if you have any issues with the spec, go into 1.0, obviously raise them offline in some fashion, preferably in PR form, so we could just approve the PR. Uh, but then yes, uh, the vote starts and you have a week after that to to vote. So even if you can't make the call, you still get the vote. All right. Anything else before we let Clemens get to his soccer match? All right. In that case, we are done. Thank you, guys. This is so exciting. We're getting so close. I am super excited. Yep. All right. All right. Thank cool. You. Thanks, guys. We'll talk next time. Bye, Bye everybody. Thank you.